The book on your screen was first written in 1994, but it is currently in its 32nd printing. This is the fifth edition, and the author is G. Edward Griffin, and he's joining us here on Book TV on C-SPAN 2 in Las Vegas. Mr. Griffin, who is the creature from Jekyll Island? <laughs> or what is the creature? What is the creature, yeah. I had fun with that title because I thought if anybody saw it in the bookstore, they might think it was a sequel to the you know, Jurassic Park or something like that. The creature from Jekyll Island is the Federal Reserve System. And the reason for the Jekyll Island connection is because one of the most interesting things about the Federal Reserve is that it was created on Jekyll Island. It's a real island. It's off the coast of Georgia. And it was on that island back in 1910 that a small group of men gathered and it was their mission to draft what became eventually the Federal Reserve Act. And uh, oh, I see you're going to show the pictures there, yeah. Those are the guys. And uh, the, the funny thing about that piece of history is that the Federal Reserve bill was being sold to the American people at that time as a piece of legislation that was going to somehow control those big bad bankers. You see. And what they didn't realize is that the big bad bankers that you're looking at right there. Those are the epitome of the great power centers of banking. Uh, they, they were the ones that were busy writing the bill that was supposed to control Who themselves. are these six gentlemen, Mr. Griffin? Well, they're representatives. You could walk us through them. Uh, primarily, uh, Senator Aldridge is the only one that wasn't a banker. He was the politician. He was the one that was sort of spearheading the political side of it. But father-in-law also to uh, John Rockefeller. John Rockefeller, yeah. He was tied in very closely to the banking fraternity and, and the industrial complex. A very wealthy guy in his own right. He's probably the most important political figure in the United States, short of uh, the president, who was Woodrow Wilson in those days. Uh, but the rest of these guys are all bankers, and they represented the, the dynasties of J.P. Morgan and William uh, and the Rockefeller dynasty, and they had connections to Kuhn Loeb and Company that were there, and, th and that means they were connected to the Rothschilds in, in uh, England and, and uh, France, and, and uh, Max Warburg was there. I mean, Paul Warburg was there, and he had connection to his brother Max, who was the head of the banking, the, the Warburg Banking Consortium in Germany and the Netherlands. And so what we have is this was an international uh, group here, really, representing international finance. And if there was anything that was the epitome of the big bad bankers of the world, these were the guys. So what happened there is that they knew that there was going to be some kind of a move to control banking. They knew that Congress was going to pass some kind of a law to regulate banking. And so instead of being stupid about it and just sitting back and saying, oh, I hope they don't do too bad, they decided to take the lead. They said, we'll write the bill. We'll make sure that it's to our liking. And so that's what it's all about. They went to Jekyll Island where nobody knew they uh, were going, where they, were, they had a meeting that was in a great deal of secrecy. They denied that they went for many years thereafter, you know. But they actually drafted the Federal Reserve Act on Jekyll Island in 1910. And then the next three years, it took that much time to promote it and get it through Congress. So 1910, William Howard Taft was president. Yeah. And uh, the six gentlemen who were there, uh, Nelson Aldrich, Republican whip in the Senate, Henry Davison, senior partner of J.P. Morgan, A. Piet Andrew, Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, Frank Vanderlip, President of uh, National City Bank of New York, Benjamin Strong of J.P. Morgan, and Paul Warburg, partner uh, representing the Rothschilds and Warburgs in Europe. And you say that in here that they represented essentially one-fourth of the entire wealth of the world. Of the entire world. An incredible statement. That's not my appraisal, uh, but that was the uh, opinion of the uh, journalists at the time who were writing about these people, not in connection with the Federal Reserve, but they were prominent bankers and they talked about the Jekyll Island Group, for example, and then this, these bankers in particular, and, and the investment houses of Kuhn, Loeb and Company, and so forth. The, but they said these men represented directly through the power that they held in their own hands and indirectly through the money that was concentrated in the investment firms, like the insurance companies and the banking companies, Put it all together, they said it was one-fourth of the wealth of the entire world. And you know that concentration of wealth has only increased since then? Mr. Griffin, was the Federal Reserve Act at the time it was being debated in Congress, was it a controversial thing? Were newspapers full of articles about it? 
Yes, it was. Uh, it did receive a lot of publicity at the time, and uh, there was a, a lot of discussion that uh, somehow uh, some people were aware that the banks had an influence in this legislation. And when Senator Aldridge first uh, released the uh, the legislation, it was called the Aldridge Bill, and that was really bad. Uh, Warburg said, uh, uh, Nelson, he said, don't do that. He said, people know that you're you're a Republican and that you're you're rich and that you're connected with all of the you know investment houses. Don't call it the Aldridge Bill. And Aldridge apparently had a great deal of ego, and he probably said, well, after all, I'm well-respected and so forth. So he did call it the Aldridge Bill. Well, then that's when the controversy started. People said, well, exactly what Warburg said they were going to say. So that's when they pulled the bill back because it had a lot of uh, bad uh, negativity about it. And then they reissued it, almost the same bill, but they got some Democrats, uh, Carter Glass, uh, it was called the Glass Bill, and but he was a Democrat, so that was okay, you see. And people still, even in those days, had the idea that somehow Democrats were, were hard-working people, you know, blue collar and dirt under their fingernails, you know, like Ted Kennedy. And <laughs> <laughs> but so it worked. The point is the ploy worked, and okay, now it was it was a bill being sponsored by the common man, and that's how they basically. So, in sold your it. view, the uh, the bill, the Federal Reserve, from the beginning was a ploy. Oh, absolutely, it was a ploy. It was a, a brilliant piece of strategy. These people were not stupid. They're great uh, psycho politicians. They're great strategists. And in fact, while the bill was being debated in Congress, some of these people went. Uh, uh, before the public. They gave speeches knowing it would be reported in the press and they were interviewed by journalists and they said, oh, this bill that they had written on the side, nobody knew it, but they said, ah, oh, this bill is, is not going to be good for business. It's bad for America. And they actually did that ploy. And knowing full well that the average guy would read that in the newspaper and say, hmm, these big bankers don't like the bill. Must be pretty good, you know. These fellows were brilliant and that's how they sold it. Well, you asked the question in your book, The uh, Creature from Jekyll Island, what is the Federal Reserve and what is your answer? Well, what it is, it's a cartel. It, it's not a government agency. It has the appearance of it being a government agency and they went to great lengths to give it that, that facade. It does have the power of government because Congress voted to give the power of, of enforcement to it. But in its essence, underneath it, it's a cartel. It's nothing different than a banana cartel or an oil cartel or sugar cartel. It happens to be a banking cartel. They got together, they drew up the rules and regulations for their own industry, to self-regulate their own industry is what cartels do, and then they sent it to Congress and they took off the, the label at the top that said banking cartel and they erased that, and they said Federal Reserve Act. Congress passed it into law, and that's why we think it's a government agency, is because if you don't obey the rules that they set down for their own industry, you go to prison. And so it looks like a government agency. But basically, the answer to your question is, it's a banking cartel. When did you get interested in this topic? Oh, golly, I first became interested in this topic in the middle 1960s. I was producing some rather low-budget uh, documentaries, and I thought, you know, a good documentary would be on inflation. What's the cause of inflation? I wasn't too sure myself what it was, but I knew it had something to do with the manipulation of the money supply. So I started to do some research, and I never did produce the documentary, but that's when I got my, uh, you know, my interest into it. I had a box full of research, and then, anyway, eventually I got the box back out and started to give some talks on it, and it just sort of grew. It is, there was no great milestone along the way that the more I learned about it, the more I realized that uh, it was a very important topic to the future of our country. You write in The uh, Creature from Jekyll Island that the FDIC is not insurance. What, what is it? Well, this is a hard thing to answer because you have the, uh, the problem that when you over-insure something, or if you insure something to, to the point where there's no risk at all, then there's a tendency for the thing you're insuring against to happen. You know the old jokes about it. You've got the, the store <laughs> that's losing money, <laughs> and so you insure it for a million dollars, and by golly, it burned down. You, you know, it just couldn't help it. It just somebody left a match, I guess. Yeah, that's called moral hazard. And when, um, that's the name the insurance industry gives it. 
So when you have a government agency